I guess so today I'm going to be explaining five reasons why both you and your team often struggle to effectively attack in Valorant. So if you guys aren't aware, attacking is generally considered the harder half. Uh, not On some maps it's, it's a little more even, but on some maps it's definitely heavy uh, defense sided. So let's go ahead and get into the first couple of tips. And basically what you guys really want to understand about attacking is that whenever you solo queue, whenever you queue into a game with random teammates, you're going to have people that are on either end of the spectrum. So, you know, let's say one end of the spectrum is passive and the under, other end of the spectrum is aggressive, right? So if your whole team is super passive, what, what are you going to do on attack? You guys are just going to sit around more than likely and just waste the, the clock, right? So the first thing you want to understand is that this time from the very beginning of the round is extremely valuable. You want to be trying to use as much of it as you can efficiently. And if you're just sitting here watching nothing, expecting them to push you, because again, remember, whenever you're attacking, the defenders do not have to push you. You are the team, you're the, the half with the spike, right? So you guys have to plant the spike. You have to take space, push to plant the spike. None of this requires that the defenders push up into you here, right? This is just one example of this. Another might be that I'm sitting like right here. So we're wasting time. This is one, this is the passive end of the spectrum. You're going to sometimes queue into games where your teammates are hyper passive and it just feels like they don't know how to push. And the other end of the spectrum is you're going to queue into the game with uh, four Instalog duelists where they all run into the site and they suck and they all die, right? So everyone yeah. dies and then they keep trying to full yeah. push things and it just doesn't work anywhere. So what you really want to do is find a balance, right? A balance would be what? It would be defaulting. You guys understand what, what defaulting is? You guys probably have mixed conceptions of what defaulting is. So let's go ahead and talk about this. This is why comms are also extra important on attack. We'll talk about that in a second though. So defaulting is important. Basically, the, if I could explain it quickly but effectively, I would say defaulting is whenever you're basically waiting for opportunities to present themselves to you, but your team is also Here. spread out across the map Here. so that you cannot really get flanked. So you might be thinking you're waiting for opportunities. Ducky, didn't you just say to not play passive? Yes, but there's a very distinct difference between sitting in a corner like this and you know holding an angle like this or holding an angle like this, right? Because if we're holding an angle like this, this is this is definitely a, a very hot spot part of this map. So there's a, a higher chance that enemies are actually going to peek out of these areas. And if they peek, all that all that you really need is just one shot, right? One shot, you get a kill. What happens after you get this kill is that it's 5v4. Your team now has the advantage. Your team now has confidence and your team can now choose to push an area. So say we get a kill from Art right here. Now we can really do whatever we want, right? It just depends where our team is uh, positioned. So if, say we're stacked toward A, we're probably gonna wanna go toward A. If we're stacked toward B, we can just go B or we can just push through mid, it doesn't really matter. But that's how you default guys. So again, you don't wanna be playing too aggressive. It, so right, don't get me wrong though. So if you are playing extremely passive and it works because the enemy team is super aggressive, that is great, but remember this is not going to happen every game. Similarly, if you, you know, if you push fast every single round and it works, that's great, but keep in mind this is not going to work every single round of every single game. It's only going to work in the minority of games. This is why defaulting is such an effective strategy to learn at a very low rank. This is going to probably be the most important takeaway of this whole video is, you know, understanding how to default. Again, you want to be looking for opportunities around the map. So in this scenario, you might be just kind of like waiting here to see if someone's yeah. going to cross, maybe slowly inch out. You don't want to peek too hard. You want to play too aggressive because again, your, your team hasn't really decided where they want to go. That's the whole point. Again, your team is here. spread out. One person here, one person here, here, here. here. maybe a couple here, or maybe a couple of B instead. And you're just kind of, you know, looking for opportunities. Say someone mid gets a kill, then you probably want to group mid or maybe call to go B. But that's the whole gist of it. So moving on to the next couple of tips. Roll is very important when attacking to understand. So if, you know, if you if you struggle an attack currently and say you're, you know, a controller or a sentinel, don't feel bad because it is naturally uh, much more difficult to, you know, attack on those rolls. So what, what do you really want to do on those rolls? Again, learn how to default, learn how to get your team to default. Those are probably the most important things on those rolls. But what does that require? That requires comms. So comms are always especially important, right? But especially in this scenario even. Um, so yeah, comms are important. Also, you want to view your duelists and initiators as tools. You don't want to view them as burdens. You don't want to view them as, you know, trash players. You want to view them as tools. So think of them 
you know, they have a toolkit, an arsenal of abilities that can be used as tools. So one example of this might be, okay, Sky, can you dog from here and dog mid door? Or Breach, can you flash right here? And then we push their door or, you know, can we dart over here? Yada, 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 right? So if you're not asking your teammates for these abilities, you don't need to be asking for all of this, right? You can just ask for a simple one ability around, especially like a Sky Dog, Silver Drone. I've said this like a million times, right? If you can ask them to use those abilities, you get this much space for free. And then you can just kind of walk up behind it. And, you know, your team is, has a much better chance in this scenario. Because if you're just a single Sentinel or controller saying nothing, just kind of chilling around, you're going to fall into one of these traps where you just kind of wait for too long. Or you just push too much and it doesn't work, right? Eventually, you're going to fall into those traps if you aren't using comms and if you aren't learning and actively trying to persuade your team to default when necessary. And so you're going to have to understand when the best times are to default. But anyways, next we have those of you who are duelists and initiators and those of you guys who struggle on attack that play those roles are more than likely... Um, you don't understand how to effectively take space, right? And this also requires comms, right? You can't take space... You can't take space on your own, but it's going to be much less effective and much um, less frequent or, you know, replicable than if you have, like, a breach flashing here for you and you're running in as a jet here like this. I still don't really know this map, so I don't know how I'm uh, clearing angles, but it's the same ideas, right? So, you know, ask, ask an initiator to flash for you or a dog, a drone, you know, go before it and then just peek. Go for a kill. And then it kind of lets your team know where you want to go. So, so let's say we go through here, we get a kill with help of our like sky uh, dog or Silva drone. And then we can kind of <clears throat> say, okay, let's just run B, let's run B, right? Because our team's all right here. Or you say, okay, let's come back. They're going to start rotating toward B. I think we just walk A, right? Or we just run A maybe. Um, something like that. <clears throat> So again, as a duelist and as an initiator, you're looking for opportunities. I mean, everyone on your team should really be doing this, but you, it's your job as a duelist or as an initiator to be a little more risky uh, and kind of, you know, kind of accept that what your job is to be is to be a little more risky because um, you have abilities that, that are kind of throwawayable, if that makes sense. Anyways, moving on to the final tip here, uh, you're too predictable when you try to uh, push, right, when, you, when you're attacking. So let's say that we come mid. We've came mid for the last four rounds. Uh, some rounds it's worked, some rounds it's not. But what's gonna happen eventually, if your team as a collective keeps yeah. going mid, um, they're gonna just start stacking. Like say they have a sky. The sky is gonna start coming here and start flashing you. They're gonna start, you know, stacking mid and, and it's gonna be much harder for you to really take this. So again, this is why defaulting is so important and also why you can literally walk up on people like this. If you kind of just walk up, you know, sometimes you're going to get like one tapped right here. But other than that, you should be able to walk up, especially if you've been putting presence four rounds in a row mid. You should be able to walk up here relatively far before you actually hear or see someone. And if sometimes you're going to be able to walk all the way behind people and you can either flank or you can just tell your team, come, 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 I have a, I have a, right? So, you know, th this is a, uh, this is kind of what I mean. This map, I'm not super familiar with, but on other maps, you can imagine, uh, let's say Breeze, you can go like holes, you can walk up mid, just be unpredictable with where you push and try to look for opportunities, try to look for kills, especially if you are a uh, initiator or a duelist, which I think probably the majority of you are. But if you're not, you can still look for those opportunities, especially when your team is passive, scared to push and just, you know, you feel like they're just kind of a weak team. So hopefully this is helpful, guys. By far the most important thing is to understand the spectrum that I explained at the beginning is being too passive or too uh, aggressive. And then understand that the, the balance of that is um, defaulting. So you really want to understand how to default. You want to understand that you want to try to convince your team to default in certain scenarios. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And peace, guys.